Nice bit of tinkling on the ivories there, didn't you think? I love a little bit of tinkling on the ivories. You do indeed. Yeah. East 17, named well appropriately after the postcode of Walthamstow, East London. Where he come oh, from? Yes. That's, that's your area of the woods. It is indeed, there. yeah. Well, I was north. I wouldn't say I was east, but it wasn't that far. It was only a few miles. Well, that's right. English pop boy band comprising Robbie Craig, uh, John Hendy and Timmy, Terry Caldwell. Uh, formed in Walthamstow in London in 1991, the group has achieved 18 top 20 singles and four top 10 albums, and were one of the UK's most popular boy bands during the early to mid 90s. Their boy band style was unique, occasionally blending rap and pop in, pop in songs such as their House of Love and Let It Rain. The group have currently based uh, have currently based on BPI certifications sold. A minimum of 1.8 million albums and 1.8 million singles uh, in the UK alone. And as of April 9th, uh, 2012, the group has sold 18 million records worldwide. 
uh, the frequent headliners at McGettigan's uh, JLT in Dubai. Mm. The band began when Tony Mortimer was promised a record deal after he showcased his own material. The deal was granted under the condition that he form a group, which was the formal London Records, the format London Records were looking for. Mortimer soon formed a trio with Terry Coldwell and John Hendy. The group was named, as we said, the 17 after the postcode of their hometown, Walthamstow. The original roles in the band were soon altered when Brian Harvey, who was intended to be a backup singer and dancer, was heard singing along during a record session, recording session, and was then fully duly promoted to lead vocalist. Well, that was a quick bit of promotion, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, you'll do, yep. Yeah, you're a lead vocalist, mate, eh? <laughs> Not bad, eh? Uh, Mortimer wrote uh, the vast majority of the group's songs, which often contain rap verses vocalised by him to complement Harvey's more fluid rhythm and blues voc- uh, style vocals. Uh, the group was usually seen as a grittier, more political and hip-hop or rapper-line group than rival boy band Take That, uh, as noted by Guy Adams of The Independent. He said they shaved their heads and had tattoos. It's warm and so a lot, lot cooler than the Nancy boys of Take That. Mm. In the great five-year battle that dominated British poppy, 17 were also on the winning side. Uh, their music was sharper and more streetwise. It was infused with hip-hop and rhythm and blues and sold by the bucket load. <laughs> 18 million records across Europe compared with Take That's Paltry, 17 Oh, million. that's not many, is it? Oh, you know, one million difference. I think eh? somebody's got an axe to grind there. But a bit of sour grapes there from I Guy think Adams, so. Eh? And Guy Adams, yeah. yeah. East 17 scored 12 top 10 hits in the UK singles charts between 1992 and 98. Their debut album, Walthamstow, shot to number one in the UK albums chart. It featured a string of top 20 singles, including House of Love and deep it's all right became a major success in australia as well reaching number one in early 1994 for seven consecutive weeks and reaching number three in this country in 1993 the lyrics of some of their songs such as let it rain the political undertones talking about war peace and equality love and other political issues in 1994, upon the release of their second album, Steam, they scored their only UK number one single with Stay Another Day. It remained at the top for five weeks. It was also that year's Christmas number one. It was yeah, good to I remember that. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. 1994, well, mm. almost many, many years ago. Eh? Good. Following the somewhat low-key release of the next album, Up All Night, their drop in appeal became apparent compared to previous albums. The album's songwriting duties were split among the four members of the group rather than Mortimer alone, although all the singles released from the album were penned by him. East 17 also appeared on the children's record The Gift of Christmas alongside acts, acts such as M and Emanate, uh, Boys Own, EYC, Sean Maguire, Juice, Ultimate Chaos, Let Loose, Backstreet Boys, Peter Andre, who I hate, Michelle, yes, me. Michelle Gale, <laughs> and, and what talent he's got. Danny Minogue. <laughs> In 1996, the group hit number two with the track uh, If You Ever if you ever it was a jet with the singer Gabriel. Yeah. Yes, I'm glad you were the same as me with old Peter Andre. Andre. I mean, the, say, it's, the, the shame is he is probably a really, really nice lad, you know, but he is so far up his own yeah. bosset, if you put it politely, you know, that, I mean, married to that woman who, again, is off of this planet. Um, What's her name? Uh, yeah. Oh, goodness gracious me. Um. <laughs> the, girl with, the big um, The big girl, assets. yes. yes um, oh, dear, they all come. Anyway. Yeah, they come back to us. Apparently, right? she's got about four kids at the moment. She, she wants about eight kids. Yeah, one of, them's, one of them's blind, isn't it? It's um, the son, is it, or son, daughter of uh, Dwight York. Yes. He's a footballer, yeah. 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 Jordan. 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 Yes, that's, that's right, right. yes. Jordan. Yeah, Jordan. yeah, I don't know why Peter Andre had a programme on TV about and now he's in the Iceland ads, isn't he? Or? Well, he's in the Iceland yeah. ads. He, he's done a, a DIY programme and I don't know. What's he about that? Cool. You know, but there you go. Anyway, he's in that. Anyway. Good, good, good for the old bank balance. That's Nevertheless, all. Yeah. in January 1997, Brian Harvey was engulfed in a drug-related controversy when he claimed that he had taken ecstasy pills on a night out, stating in the press that it's cool to take drugs and claiming that ecstasy ecstasy can make you a better person well i doubt that the press put a spin on the story of trying to try it into schoolgirl leah betts death in the mdma in 1995 
The act went against the group's boy band image and there was a huge media uproar leading to questions being raised by John Major in the House of Commons. With the group's career and reputation tarnished by the affair, Harvey was swiftly sacked. And Mortimer decided to leave several months later due to creative differences between himself and the rest of the band. The group split in 1997 has been described as one of the greatest breakups in pop history. Mm, that's, that's debatable, but never mind. No. Yes. Colwell and uh, Hendy later reinstated Harvey and attempted to a uh, comeback in 1998, renaming the group E17, um, and landed a record deal with Toastar Records after recording an album's worth of self-written material in their home studios. The first single, as E17, was Each Time, which reached number two in the UK. But without Mortimer's songwriting influence, the group's initial success soon wavered. And after disappointing sales of the next single, Bet You Can't Wait, reached number 12 in the, in the uh, charts, and their album Resurrection failing to make the UK top 40 and not selling as much as the record company would have liked. A hastily arranged series of concerts in Pyongyang Good girl. in uh, North Korea at the Rung Lado May 1st Stadium in May of 1999... Who's going to go there? ...were a surprise success with the band's three nights selling out the 150,000 capacity venue. Well, this did little, actually, to stem the decline, however, and the band were dropped by their label in 1999 and subsequently split up. That's interesting. I'm, I'm surprised Pyongyang welcomed them. I'm surprised that people were allowed to go, well, judging by the North Korean regime. Well, but, uh, filling a, a but they didn't sell many records, though. thousand stadium for three nights, you know. It's pretty you probably can't buy records over there. Well, that's, that's what it would be, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, in 2001, Harvey launched himself as a solo artist in a collaboration with Wyclef Jean on the top 20 single, Loving You but returned to E17 to perform numerous gigs on the nostalgia circuit with Colwell and Hendy. On the ITV1 docu-soap Redcoats, the group was shown performing at a gig that was held at Butlins in Bognor on a bill which also featured Keith Harris. That was Orville, wasn't it? Keith Harris and Orville, wasn't it? <laughs> While in 2005, Harvey, Colwell and Hendy performed a gig in Mongolia. Harvey made the news in May 2005 when he accidentally ran himself over and required <laughs> surgical treatment. How did you do that? I don't know. You can't be at the driving seat and no. under the wheels, can you? Uh, anyway, he suffered severe life-threatening injuries as a, as a result, falling into a coma for, for seven weeks following the incident. Oh, that's a blimey. That's a, a bit of a silly thing to do. Yeah, run yourself over. Yeah. On the 4th of February in 2006, Harvey appeared on the uh, UK music television show CD UK, where he announced that E17 might make a comeback with its four original members. In mid-February of 2006, the group did reform and played their first comeback concert on the 30th of May at the Shepherd's Bush Empire in London. Well, after reforming for the one-off gig... It was reported that E17 had split up again. It was shortly, wasn't it? Since, yeah, Hendy was unable to fully commit to the band because of his, his uh, roofing business, which took up a lot of his time. <laughs> Friction also flared up again between Harvey and Mortimer, who were involved in a punch-up, resulting in the latter's departure, with the remaining members continuing to form, perform as a three-piece at various club events. Yeah, well, I must remember they came from Walthamstow, which is quite a hard district, uh, actually. Yes, that's it, isn't it? I went yeah, in a pub there once it's it's called The yeah. Bell, and there was a lot of commotion going on, and then all these police turned up, and I'm, God, I'm glad I got out quickly. They'd apparently beaten up a copper in the uh, gent's toilet in, yeah. in this pub. Yeah, it wasn't a very pleasant pub. Oh, no, I mean, Never went back there, I must say. Not a nice place to go into. No. Yeah. Well, a Channel 4 documentary, East 17, The Reunion, which charted the group's rise and fall, along with a subsequent attempt to relaunch was broadcast in May 2007. E17 continued to perform as a three-member group with Mortim without Mortimer. They played at the University of Strathclyde on the 24th of September 2006 after DJ Colin Murray was unable to attend. Since then, the group has performed in clubs around the UK as well as becoming regulars on the 1990s themed Butlin's Big Weekends. A new single... F that, I won't say it because we get banned from the air. Four letter word beginning with F that was due to be released in early 2008, but was ultimately cancelled. I should think so too. I should, there's no need yes. for that, is there really? No, so. Good old Butlins, you know. Yeah. We, we saw Butlins down at Minehead uh, when I was down there. Oh, earlier it's a famous one. He said all soldiers standing, oh, wooden soldiers in there on their buildings. That's right. Well, the group performed at the 2009 Glastonbury Festival on the 25th of June in the Dance Lounge minus Tony Mortimer. 
In November of that year, all four members of the band reunited again in aid of the Bourne Free.